In his 2022 annual letter, CEO Dr. Karp explained how Palantir has a worldview since its founding of future global instability beyond where it stands today by saying, quote, We build software to ensure the survival of our most vital institutions, and we succeed only if and when those institutions do. Addressing Russia's invasion of Ukraine, CEO Alex Karp said, quote, Our software is in the fight around the world. We need an ally technology infrastructure in Europe to step up and fight this battle alongside us in order to win. This, of course, in reference to Palantir's decision to work solely with the West and its allies, foregoing other revenues to take a stand. North Atlantic Treaty Organization members have once again boosted their defense expenditures, this was back in 2020, with spending on security topping $1 trillion for an estimated third year straight. Defense seems to still be a priority for every NATO country. Well, Germany is set to increase defense spending in response to current conflicts to the tune of hundreds of billions. Here's Palantir's COO on the subject. And I think it plays to the strength of our business model where, you know, we're not waiting for that money to be obligated to start innovating. Like we are there literally on the front lines building as much features as we can for the generals who are running these campaigns, right. creating as much visibility across the allied force. That, that innovation, it's like a punctuated equilibrium and it creates a bunch of IP, a bunch of interesting products that then can be uh, systematized and brought to bear against the government's problems through the funding that, that is available. That sounds very bullish to me. NATO and allies, as we just went through, no Palantir. So with only a couple percentage points currently of its stated government TAM, way back in its S1 filing at its direct public offering, there was so much room for growth from Palantir, even from its existing and rather mature government side of the business. And there is a real possibility for the acceleration of long-term defense spending. And that could be a tailwind for this company to help stop the slowdown in the rate of government business growth that we have seen more recently. What will happen this year? Is a de the deceleration an actual one over a long time series? The answer is clearly no. But then the question is, if the baseline is 30, how does it get to where we want it, which was like the beginning of last year and not at the end of last year? And the way that happens is the deals were already positioned to win actually close. If you just look at that chart I showed you with the Kager on Foundry, these are the most important programs for a dangerous world. Now, can't go into all the details, but you know, we used to debate with people, especially my academic friends, if the world was dangerous. The, the danger of the world being clear and present to the U.S. government is very protective. It doesn't guarantee that, you know, when this integral actually how it behaves, but it makes it much more likely that it will happen in year and positively affect our revenue, which is another reason why I suspect that we will do well. Palantir's government business is about to dominate in Europe. So I've got some recent news to share with you as well as putting a few puzzle pieces together in terms of what I'm expecting going forward for Palantir's government business, but more specifically its business in Europe and how that's actually going to get the growth going again for Palantir. Palantir gears up to expand its reach into UK's NHS. So Palantir is working towards becoming the underlying operating system for the UK's national health service in an attempt to win a bid to 360 million which converts if we get this correct here 454 million us dollars which will be huge for palantir to manage the data of millions of patients across england and i just love this right here this is just hilarious this really sums up palantir's media coverage in a nutshell is this sentence right here the secretive company co-founded by peter Thiel, early investor in facebook and prominent supporter of former u.s president donald trump and it's just hilarious how Peter Thiel, this less involved character and his political stance is somehow the characterization of this entire 3,000 person company doing work all over the globe to better the West and its economies and how you choose to sum it up like that. Over the next few months, Palantir is trying to get this five-year bid of $453 million US contract in the UK for the proposed federated data platform, a new data tool to connect and integrate patient and other data sources from across the health system system, aggregating a lot of this disparate data, what Palantir does best, so real-time decisions can be made effectively by clinicians and bureaucrats. The contract is due to be awarded in November of this year, so add this to the list of potential catalysts we have for the stock. Here's a quote. This would be the veins through which patient data would flow very much the operating system for data and the NHS 
another feather in the cap in terms of Palantir saying they can be the operating system of an entire organization. This is clearly a core element of the NHS's entire digital transformation program. When an organization has to do a big radical digital transformation and it involves a lot of data, you turn to Palantir. Great to see that being done in this case. The UK is a key market for Palantir. Palantir employs 600 people in its largest single office and plans to hire an additional 250 staff this year. The company already processed this is sensitive national security data for UK public authorities, including the Ministry of Defense and Cabinet Office. So not only is this a five-year contract, but it also has an optional extension for an additional two years. So they're saying this could be over a billion if you're considering 10 years in some extensions in that regard. So that would be huge. You're getting somewhere on the order of a hundred million dollars per year annually if you extend it out what they're saying here is if you look at these sorts of projections predictions if palantir gets in and scales up in the organization if everything goes right how are you going to remove them well that's really what we're looking at as palantir shareholders here is not just can you get these contracts but can you keep them can you grow them and make them expand so they become more and more valuable net dollar retention improves and everything like that so here's what i want to tie this back to in this video government revenue was up 16 percent year on year in the first quarter and that's of this year came down comparing to last year of 2021 76 percent in 2021 versus that slower rate in 2022. And a big part of Palantir's growth is tied to the government business. So it's very important that Palantir is able to get the government business going again. We know it's been a little behind in these last couple quarters, and that's due to sort of the seasonal nature of Palantir's government business and government spending in general. But also, we want to see if Palantir can take advantage of the opportunities being presented currently in a macro sense, but also with its product and its ability, as I'm showing you right now, this was Sankar in an interview with Barron's back after the fourth quarter, Sankar being the COO of Palantir. He said they hired 175 salespeople in 2021. They're expecting to build a direct sales force in Europe in 2022, which is awesome to see. Now, this, of course, is ahead of news of what's going on in Ukraine and all of the defense spending that's going to be coming. Also, I just wanted to mention we have have these offices in Palantir, Europe and Middle East, Denmark, France, Germany, Israel, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, United Arab Emirates, and of course, the UK office in London, the biggest single office in terms of employee count. Very much looking forward to Palantir's government business and Gotham as a product expanding and driving more growth going forward. So we've seen some more news recently, not a lot of coming out of Europe, but of course, we know that Palantir was saying how they're putting aside some of the paperwork to sign it later and so that they can actually deploy their software in front of important issues that are arising. So while we might not be seeing a lot of contracts being signed or at least the publishing of that news, we do know it is happening. We've heard Palantir talk about it. We know it's a huge focus. We know they're hiring there and we know it's just a matter of one or two, three quarters at a max of seeing all of this hard work pay off. At the very least, some strategic partnerships coming through in terms of Palantir, maybe not generating a profit or pulling in revenue from their relationships, the very least deploying their software and getting a relationship set up, which is one that they can build off of going forward. So I really do think Palantir's government business is going to spin back up again going into the Q2 earnings report. I don't think it is going to exceed expectations significantly, given that there hasn't been much lead time for the ability of Palantir to sign lots of contracts, as I was just saying, and actually recognize that as revenue in Q2. I think that is much more going to come later on in the latter half of the year, heading into 2023 as well, as we see Palantir get more and more accepted into Europe for the help it is able to provide. So that's my update on my confidence in Palantir's ability to grow its Europe business, how I believe it is going to succeed beyond Wall Street's expectations going forward, and how you should be on the lookout for the same. Leave a like if you found this helpful. Until next time.